Yeah, I call her Boss Bertha, and I think she would be okay with me saying that. We are celebrating a true Seattle trailblazer today, and lesser known, hiding in plain sight, as the saying goes. If we went back 100 years ago, a lady by the name of Bertha Knight Landis was in the Seattle City Council, about to become elected president of the council, a move that would prepare her to become Seattle's first female mayor, and the first female mayor of any major American city. Bertha was sort of very committed to her, to her values, and which drove her decision-making about trying to clean up Seattle at a time when Seattle was this crazy wild west port city. But, you know, if you wanted to indulge in any kind of vice, you could get it in Seattle. But then Bertha Landis came along and the party was over for a while. <laughs> What I like about Seattle in the 20s is, before she became mayor, it's an open city. So it means there's lots of prostitution and gambling. Even though it's prohibition, there's alcohol. So she comes into office on a reform movement. She's elected because people want the city cleaned up. It's not like Bertha Landis was mayor of some city with covered wagons and, you know, cabins and tents and stuff. She was mayor of a metropolis, the metropolitan Seattle, after World War I, before World War II, an era of really incredible, crazy growth of the suburbs, the streetcars, the traffic. A lot of the same issues we face now around transportation, around unhoused people, around uh, people who are economically disadvantaged. Bertha Landis was dealing with those things 100 years ago. And she only lived another, she lived to the early 1940s, passed away in the Midwest in Michigan, but came back here to be buried next to her husband. And their husband was the reason they'd moved out here in the first place in the 1890s. He was a geologist, Henry Landis. He was actually temporary president of the University of Washington in between two really long serving presidents. The most visible thing about Bertha Landis's grave, when I was driving here today, I always look for the big rock, which is a monument to her husband. Bertha just has a little kind of metal plate on the ground with the years of her birth and death. She has other family members. She has a couple kids who didn't survive into adulthood. She got elected on March 9th, 1926, and then she lost her election on March 13th, 1928. So just two short years of, of the, the Landis era in Seattle. 